Hi, my name is Raya Abbas and today I'll present the factors that brought about the convention on cluster munition and how effective it has been in its application. These are the subject I'll address in my presentation. What are the cluster munitions? These are the weapon consisting of a container that opens and drop in the air and throw large number of explosive submissions and bomblets in a large area. The convention is an international treaty that bans all use, transfer, production, storing of cluster bombs. Apart from this, this convention establishes a framework to support victim assistance, clearance of contaminated sites, and stockpiling destruction. This convention was adopted on 30 May 2008 in Dublin and later on came into force on 1st August 2010. This picture is the example of cluster munitions and some munitions. Driving forces behind the cluster munition convention, the first time use of cluster bomb was during World War II when Germany dropped SD2 submission in Greensby port in England. More than 40 civilians died and it took more than 18 days to clear that area. After that, it was considered an unreliable weapon which brought attention all across the world. Because of far-reaching socio-economic consequences, hindering post-conflict reconstruction and development. Excessive use of cluster munitions by different countries. Cluster munitions have been used in at least 21 states by at least 13 different countries. Use of cluster munitions extensively in Southeast Asia by United States in 1960 and 1970. The International Committee of the Red Cross estimated that in loss alone 9 million to 27 million unexploded submissions remained after conflict, resulting in over 10,000 civilian casualties to day date. The cluster munitions were used by Soviet in Afghanistan, by British in Falkland, by coalition in Gulf War, and by warring factions in Yugoslavia. From 2001 through 2002, the United States dropped 1,228 cluster bombs in Afghanistan. The importance of disarmament. Cluster munitions have harmed civilians more than 60 years because of their propensity to leave a significant post-conflict legacy of unexploded submunitions, as well as the wide area effect and imprecise nature of these conventional weapons during different conflicts. There is a lot of data to suggest that not only may civilian lives be in danger during armed conflict, but also that tampering with some munitions does may cause civilian harm and death. Unexploded some munitions pose risk to everyone, not just civilians. They have also shown in relation to friendly troops, those advance was hindered by use of these weapons by their friends. Accidents using some munitions does have claimed the lives of even clearance specialists who are well versed in dealing with all types of these weapons. The rules of international humanitarian law, which are the prohibition of indiscriminate attacks, disproportionate attacks, and the obligation to accept all reasonable measures to prevent attacks and its consequences, are these factors which also brought about the Convention on Cluster Munitions. Historical ban efforts. In 1974, Swedish led proposal about two of cluster munitions features, which are their indiscriminate effect and the risk of unnecessary suffering to soldiers from many small bomblets fragments. In diplomatic work in 1970, comparatively little attention was given to the post conflict hazard is created by the scattering of massive quantities of explosive submunitions. Belgium was first country in the world to adopt a national pro law prohibition anti-personal mines on 2 March 1995 after persistent campaigning by NGOs like Handicap International Belgium which resulted in Bill in 2006 like a to ban the all type of cluster munitions in the Belgium. In 1969, the 21st International Conference of Red Cross held in Istanbul passed a resolution 27 asking the ICRC to respond proposed new international humanitarian law rules to invite government experts to consider them. In early 1976, the second ICRC sponsored expert conference, this time held in Lagano, made little further progress toward a meeting among government experts on banning or restricting fragmentation weapons. 
anti-personal landmines are prohibited internationally under the 1997 Convention on Prohibition of the Use, Stockpiling, Production and Transfer of Anti-Personal Mines and on their destruction. It was proved proved unprecedented diplomatic victory against cluster munitions. On 10 October 1980, the Convention on Cluster Munitions was adopted in UNA to ban cluster munitions and it became operative on December 2, 1983. Failure of cluster munitions. Many clearance experts regularly cite failure rates of 10% to 40% due to method of delivery, the age of some munition, the temperature of air, whether it lands on soft or a muddy landscape, if it gets stuck in trees or other plants, whether it sustains damage after scattering, and whether it lands in a way that prevents from activating. These are also known as dumb munitions due to lack of self destructive ability. Many explosives are are left behind after a conflict has ended. They include unexploded artillery, shells, grenades, rockets, and airdrops bomb as well. 2006 Israel Hezbollah War. During the 34 day conflict, the Israel Defense Forces bombed throughout Lebanon and made attacks over even UN monitored blue line into the south of the country. In return, a Hezbollah fired 3,970 rockets at Israel during the conflict and 901 of them dropped into urban areas. The use of cluster munitions in the conflict added weight to the arguments of the International Committee of the Red Cross as well as the Cluster Munition Coalition, and they expressed these threats both at the time of use and post-conflict through an international treaty restricting the cluster munitions. The Oslo process. In early 2000, for the first time, Norway announced that it would host an international conference on cluster munition. During 2006, Norwegian officials looked for signs of the elements they believed would be essential to an achievable, freestanding international process to address the humanitarian impacts of cluster munitions. In 2006, Norwegian officials conducted a successful meeting with the Cluster Munitions Coalition in Geneva, London, and Oslo. In late February 2007, 46 states signed the Oslo declaration on cluster munitions and then they committed themselves to concluding by the end of 2008 a legally mandatory international instruments that would prohibit the use production transfer and stockpiling of cluster munitions that cause unacceptable harm to civilian the oslo process was characterized by a close cooperation between not only states but also with international organizations and civil society actors as well the presence of and vocal participants by survivor of cluster munition throughout the entire process was another important characteristic that helped bringing about a new convention in record time. Effectiveness of the Cluster Munition Convention <clears throat> The Convention on Cluster Munitions has proved how many Humanitarian disarmament treaty can succeed even without the support of some military powers. According to the Cluster Munition Monitor, almost 1.5 million cluster munitions and more than 178 million submunitions have been destroyed by state parties. The Mine Action Review reports that clearance operations have cleared at least 84,000 unexploded submunitions and more than 638 square kilometers since the convention entered into the force. The clearance figures for 2018 were record setting with the more than 128 square kilometer of cluster munitions contaminated area cleared or more than 135,000 some munitions destroyed 2019 report of cluster munition monitor also remarked positively regarding its success. Victims and survivor by including the families and the communities of those directly impacted by cluster munitions in the definition of a victim, the treaty recognized that it is not just those who are killed or injured that are harmed by the weapon. The provisions of convention around victim assistance set new global standard by outlining details of how states shall assist victims of cluster munitions. Survivors were instrumental in the negotiation of the convention on cluster munition and have continued to be strong advocates for an implementer of the treaty throughout the past 10 years. Affected states have taken a leadership role in the <laughs> treaty with countries such as Laos and Lebanon leading implementation and universalization efforts. For example, Laos as the country most affected by cluster munitions hosted the first annual meeting of state parties of the Convention on Cluster Munitions.
Norm strengthening. Convention on the cluster munition has made significant progress over the past 10 years with almost two-thirds of United Nations member states joined. The norm against cluster munition has extended beyond diplomatic and military circles to impact the financial sector. Many states view the prohibitions on assistance with cluster munitions activities in the convention as applying to financial investment in cluster munition production, and now 11 states have law prohibiting investment in cluster munition production. The Dutch Peace Organization has been leading an international de-investment campaign to stop explosive investment, which has been highly successful in encouraging or pressuring financial institutions to remove investment in cluster munition procedure. 2020 Cluster Munition Monitoring The global treaty banning cluster munition is having a significant impact in eliminating these weapons assisting affected countries and building a powerful stigma against cluster bombs. Now 110 state parties have committed to ending the death and destruction caused by these weapons. The report notes that implementation of the stockpile destruction obligation has been a remarkable success. Since its adoption in 2008, a collective total of 1.5 million cluster munitions containing more than 178 million submissions have been destroyed. According to this report, the destruction of 99% of the total global cluster munition stocks declared by state parties. Switzerland was the last state party to complete stockpile destruction in March 2019. According to the 2020 Cluster Monitoring Report, in 2019, the cluster munition was used in Afghanistan, Iraq, Libya, Serbia, South Sudan, and another many countries. A total of 286 new cluster munition casualties were recorded in 2019 alone, with the highest number recorded in Syria with 232 casualties. A total number of 26 countries and other areas violated by cluster munition remnants, including 10 state parties to the convention. The United States policy about cluster munition. The USA policy on cluster munition is outdated and dangerous. The USA has historically defended the use of cluster munition. Then acting assistant secretary of political military affairs, Stephen Moll, he said on 2008 that the United States relies on cluster munition. It's an important part of our own defense strategy resources. Then Department of State Legal Advisor Harold Cord stated on 2009 that the United States has determined that its national security interest cannot be fully ensured consist with the term of the Convention on Cluster Munitions. Later on, Obama, Obama administration also supported the use of cluster munition. Then on November 30, 2017, the Deputy Secretary for Defense, Patrick Shannon, said that cluster munition provide the joint force with an effective and necessary capability to engage area target. Then Biden administration did not change any policy regarding the use of cluster munition. So the now the current USA uh, policy regarding the cluster munition is it was it was the same as it was issued under the President Donald Trump in November 2017. He also replaced a Defense Department policy directive on cluster munition granted by the George Bush administration in July 2008. The 2017 policy abandoned a requirement that. By the end of 2018, the USA could no longer use notoriously unreliable cluster munition. That result is more than 1% rate of the unexploded weapons. Challenges remain. Despite the success of convention, still there are a number of challenges exist because a small number of states outside the convention continue to use of cluster munitions such as Cambodia, Libya, South Sudan, Sudan, Ukraine, Libya. The cluster munitor munitions reported at least 674 cluster munitions attacked in Syria up till mid-2019 and 3,262 casualties of cluster munitions attacks from 2012 to 2017. 13 signatory states that have not yet ratified the Convention of Cluster Munitions. For example, they have no reason to delay ratification especially because 11 of them have no cluster munitions weapons. 
looking ahead <coughs> a strong action is necessary to help the convention on cluster munition community to meet its goal of completing implementation of treaty by 2030 a concerted effort needs to be made to condemn any move toward using cluster munitions used by the united states over the next two or three years usa and other non member states should also be member of the convention of on cluster munitions and should start working to eliminate cluster munitions or cluster weapons in conclusion of the presentation i would like to say the convention on cluster munition is a response to the suffering caused by cluster munition which have killed and injured many thousands of civilians in the countries where they have been used in may 2008 107 states concluded an international treaty prohibiting these weapons Convention on Cluster Munition has been effective after emerging and can be seen in case of cluster munitions destruction by different countries. The tendency of cluster munitions to create significant danger for civilians remains a significant problem with the ordinance. The major user states of cluster munitions have not joined the convention, leaving the legality of the weapons under international humanitarian law principles an open question. Opponents of cluster munitions point to their inaccuracy and high dead rates as reasons for their illegality under international humanitarian law. Despite these differences, I would suggest all states should accept convention on cluster munitions and ban to use of cluster munitions for the sake of civilians. Thank you.